Mr. Sri Gopal Kabra, MD RR Global, Mr. Dinesh Chandra Agrawal, CMD Agrawal Infocom Private Limited, Sunita Quadras from Times Group, all distinguished dignitaries, invitees, and all my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Infrastructure is very important for every country because water, power, transport, and communication, without that, we don't have industry. And without industry, we will not get capital investment. And without industry and capital investment, we, can, we will not create employment potential. And that's the reason that the infrastructure is very important for the development and progress of any country. In Indian scenario, our Prime Minister dream is to make Indian economy of $5 trillion and Atma Nirbhar Bharat. For that reason, we need to have more export. And presently, the logistic cost in the, particularly in our country, is 15 to 16 percent. And uh, it is to be, actually, in China, it is 8 to 10 percent. USA and European countries, it is 12 percent. And India, it is 15 to 16 percent of the GDP. So this is the time which is very important for our trade and business and industry, that how we are going to reduce our logistic cost. And that is one of the reasons that we need to develop new roads. We need to develop waterways. We need to develop new airports. And we have to change a lot of things related with the logistics. We have got a huge potential. Some multimodal logistic parts already in our plan, we are now planning to start some of the works already starting, and by which we can reduce the cost. The most important thing in the transport is the making of good roads. Now we are making good roads, particularly 27 green express highways. And that is very important for reducing logistic cost. For example, presently, what the, in the, our process, the roads we are making, it is Delhi to Dehradun. In the end of this year, it will be two hours. Delhi to Haridwar, two hours. Delhi to Jaipur, two hours. And Delhi to Chandigarh, two and a half hours. Delhi to Amrutsar, four hours. Delhi to Katra, six hours. Delhi to Srinagar, eight hours. And Delhi to Mumbai, in, eight, uh, in 12 hours. And Chennai to Bangalore, in two hours then we are also making different type of green highways. One of the important highways which we are making from Surat. Presently, the North India traffic going to Mumbai and Pune. And after that, it goes to Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, Cochin, all over in South India. But now, in Delhi-Mumbai Express Highway, we have now new road from Surat to Nasik, Nasik to Ahmednagar, Ahmednagar to Solapur, Solapur to Karnul, and by Karnul it will go up to South India. So it is going to reduce the cost. The most important thing, making good roads, is very important. Now you just take the example of Mumbai to Delhi. Presently the truck has taken 52 hours. But after making this express highway, it will be possible in 20 hours for the truck. So naturally the fuel cost will be reduced, time will be reduced, and that is exactly we can reduce the logistic cost. But at the same time as a transport minister, we are planning for using of different fuels. Because in presently, import of fossil fuel in India, it is 17, 16 to 17 lakh crores we are spending on it. And it is creating pollution. So the idea is to we have to use different alternative fuels. The ethanol, methanol, biodiesel, bio LNG, bio CNG, electric, and hydrogen, green hydrogen, preferably. Now, in just in a Pani we have launched a project from Indian oil, and that is they are converting perli into one lakh liter of bioethanol and 150 ton of bio vitamin per day. And there is huge quantity of pearl is available in Punjab, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh. 
and because of burning of Perli, Delhi is facing the pollution problem. So I always talking to the people giving two philosophies. One is conversion of knowledge into wealth. That is the innovation, entrepreneurship, science, technology, <coughs> research, skilled and successful practices. We name it as knowledge and conversion of knowledge into wealth is the future. And the other important theory is conversion of waste into wealth. In Assam, we have got Assam Petroleum is making 100 ton of methanol per day. The methanol rate is 22 rupees per liter and diesel rate is 110 rupees per liter. And methanol is to be a, a, a superior fuel compared with the diesel. So we can reduce the cost. Even in Mumbai, the Deepak fertilizer and RCM is making methanol. And we can use this methanol for bus transport also. The other important thing is now we can make bio CNG and bio LNG. I am talking from last many years, but when anything out of box, it takes time, people, time to people to believe in it. It is the time that we need to diversification of agriculture towards energy and power sector. Without development in agriculture, we cannot make Atmanirbhar Bharat. And presently we have sugar surplus, rice surplus, corn surplus, and that is the reason that the price, market price, are less than MSP. And that is the big problem for the government. So for that reason, diversification of agriculture towards energy and power sector is the most important policy for the government. We are making now bioethanol from sugarcane juice, molasses, sea molasses, baby molasses. Then we can make bioethanol second generation from bamboo, bagasse, and biomass. Already in Assam, we have started the project of second generation ethanol. So actually, uh, tomorrow there was a function that I am going to launch the flex engine car of Toyota, uh, that Camry, on bioethanol. But actually, tomorrow we have cabinet meeting, so it postponed at 11 September. So the, now the car is on 100% bioethanol and it generates 40% power also from that. So the cost of the petrol is coming to 25 rupees. So my suggestion is now the flex engine are available. We are planning now, we have got the technology that petrol mileage and ethanol mileage will be the same. So already the technology is accepted by Indian oil. Because once I researched that there is a technology in Russia, I called the scientist here, given presentation to the chairman of Indian oil, Mr. Vaidya, and Mr. Ram Kumar of the research laboratory in charge director. And after that three months of trial, it, the technology is proved. So now the flex engine scooters are there. From Bajaj, TBS, and uh, Hero, that they can use 100% bioethanol. Now the Toyota, the Hyundai, Mercedes, BMW, already all these flex engines are available in Brazil. And the same standard is there even in Canada and USA. So we have accepted the standards and now we can use 100% bioethanol in place of petrol that is going to reduce our import and create more employment potential and growth in agriculture, rural and tribal India. So the second important thing is electric. I remember in many programs, last three, four years, I am talking about electric vehicles. Every time people were asking me many questions. But you journalist, people asking me more questions. Oh, gaadi raaste mein band hogi to kya hoga, ye hoga to kya hoga. Kisi ki gaadi band nahi hui, par question puchne walo ka band ho gaya. <laughs> now there is no problem. I am just giving you the example, now there is a waiting list for four-wheeler car, electric car for one year. The scooter, electric, 400 startup, they are making excellent scooters now. And there are, they are waiting list now. So the electric is a fuel for the future. And we have already the battery chemistry is developed, the lithium ion, zinc ion, sodium ion, aluminum ion, and the new technology is aluminum air technology. So there is no problem about lithium. Now I am giving you the example just uh, 15 days before I launched a double decker electric bus in Mumbai. Now bus, electric double decker bus with electric, the cost is coming 60 rupees per kilometer. For non-AC bus, cost is coming 39 rupees per kilometer 
and for AC bus the cost is coming 41 rupees per kilometer and the diesel bus in best their cost is coming 115 rupees per kilometer so if you can do the comforts like business class in electric bus and if we can convert that trolley bus on electric cable I feel that we can reduce the ticket rate by 25 to 30 percent giving comforts to the public and the public transport will be more popular in the mind of the people that is the need of the hour because everyone wants to use car and now presently in the country we have 150000 buses for the state government and the city bus service unki sthiti aisi hai ki horn chhod ke sab basta hai so i am telling you london transport is the ideal model we can give guarantee to the operator for 225 to 250 km per day he can invest we have just issued the tender of 5500 buses and i am confident that we can go up to 10 lakh buses in the country now 1 lakh 50000 buses are there we can make public transport popular my idea is to make electric highway making cable from delhi to jaipur on all highway i am ready for that i am talking with some companies now electric truck is ready for launching electric bus are ready and electric is a indigenous fuel and in our basket 40% of the power is solar power and once upon a time solar power rate was 16 rupees per unit now it is coming to 2 rupees 40 paisa per unit so 100% we are now planning the government planning is of taking 60% of power to solar power so my suggestion is the electric can be a fuel it can be really a good fuel and clean fuel it will reduce the pollution at the same time this perli biomass five ton of perli is giving one ton of bio cng and bio lng already we have five six project my own tractor we have converted mahindra tractor in bio cng and that bio cng and bio lng can be available because we have lot of production as per the rice is concerned and the rice straw the people are burning i just assure mr vaidya indian oil chairman that you can make hundreds of factory whatever the vitamin from your side bio vitamin we will purchase in anaja why we don't need to import that it is import substitute cost effective pollution to an indigenous and the most important thing where i will request you that you should take special program for that that is of green hydrogen by changing the fuel we can reduce the logistic cost which is very important for our industry now the we are making brown hydrogen from petroleum black hydrogen from the coal and a green hydrogen from the water seven years before i am member of parliament from nagpur and in our corporation we are selling the sewage water of nagpur to government of maharashtra for power generation and we are getting 300 crore rupees as a royalty from that i will request you make the study of three uh, mathura project when i was water resources minister the triveni engineering is the company and really you go and visit that we can make the solid waste management and liquid waste management industry of 5 lakh crores west to west in mathura the project in hybrid lng the 40% grant is given by the government i was water resources minister at that time and the 80 mld of sludge of mathura converted into clean water and that water is purchased by refinery of indian oil in mathura given 20 crore rupees per year as a royalty and the project is completed so in ganga everywhere lot of waste water is available even in nagpur also now my plan is by this waste water we need segregate the solid waste and for that reason we can make rooftop solar because in green hydrogen 70% cost is power so by using solar power my idea is to take this is really a, uh, people are not to believe me but my idea is to take it 1 dollar per kg green hydrogen giving 450 km average i have got green hydrogen car i not green it's a hydrogen car from uh, toyota mirai mirai means future next time i will come with that car it's so beautiful it's more comfortable than mercedes you can see that it's in my house here so my suggestion is 
we can make green hydrogen from segregating the waste. By segregation, there will be plastic, glass and metals and organic waste. From organic waste, we can get methane and within we can again convert into green hydrogen. And that water, with using solar power, we can get oxygen and hydrogen, the hydrogen will be there and by electrolyzer. The cost of the electrolyzer is 1 crore 20 lakhs. And there was one company who started the production, I got, I got offered to inaugurate that, launching that the uh, electrolyzer. But now hundreds of industries are making the uh, electrolyzers. And we are the highest exporter of electrolyzer in the world now. So by making this green hydrogen, by using electrolyzer and using solar power, we can compress it up to 500 bar. And already because of my <laughs> constant persuasion, Kirloskar has invented the generator set on 100% bioethanol. It is with me in the house. So we, would, we don't need to use diesel. Ethanol rate is 60 rupees, diesel rate is 110 rupees. On that basis, we can compress that and that we can use that in car, truck, buses, chemical industry, steel industry, everywhere. And now we are the importer of the energy. 100% within 10 years, we will be the exporter of the energy. And even in the farmers, they have got the water. They can make pre-cooling plant, co-storage or uh, food, uh, where go down for the food grain with the solar rooftop and they can generate green hydrogen and there will be a gas station on his road and he can you he can take that guy in anna data ke bajaya, wo urja data banega. That will change the total scenario of the economy. So my suggestion is we need to reduce the logistic cost and for that reason. We need, we have to make good roads and at the same time change in fuel. I am fully confident that we can reduce the ticket rate by 25 to 30 percent with giving more comforts. So this is the time that the technology is very important. Regarding the Indian infrastructure, there are everywhere in water, power, transport, and there are many type of projects are there. Some of the projects there internal rate of return is good. In the government, our officers are here, they are making economic viability of every project. If you can give them gold also, they will tell, sir, first we have to take economic viability of the project. Why they waste the time, I never understand. <laughs> all logistic projects, all road projects are having good internal rate of return. That is the reason that I have, we have income of 40,000 crore per year. And at the end of 24, my toll income will be 140,000 crore. So I have to, actually, I need support from the investor. I don't need. If they want to invest me, they are welcome to. I don't have any resources from them. Now in Invit model, we have decided to go into the capital market. And now, last level permissions are there. And by which I am interested to take money from the poor people the people who retired from government services, the small people like constable, clerk, PO, teacher, journalist, after their retirement, they can invest in NHI, in the our invit model, and we will assure them return of 8% per year. And by which 8% per year we can give them. So today, it can be a great benefit for the retired people, the pensioners, and my interest is to now take the money from that class. I don't have problem. I'm never going to any bank. And now we have sufficiently strong. The problem is that yesterday, one of the company from Bangalore come to me that we have already given 1,000 crore rupees in Mumbai, Delhi Express Highway. But your people are only taking 200 crore. Please tell them to take 800 crore as early as possible. We are ready to give them. That's the reason the investment come to me in Nagpur from Bangalore. So I have, we don't have problem about the investment. Though the, if the foreigners and good people want to invest, they are welcome. They can invest in infrastructure companies. So internal rate of return is good, no problem. When the internal rate of return is not good, either it is railway project, airport project, then you can, we can give 30%, 40% from them. I'm giving the example. In 95-2000, I was minister in Mumbai, and R.C. Sina was my MD. 
At that time in MSRDC, I was pursuing him to construct airport in Shiri. He says, sir, no, sir, this is not possible. I pursue it. I try my level best. The finance ministry opposed it. And ultimately, the proposal was pending with the government of Maharashtra. But after that, the government already completed that project. And now the 80 flights are coming to Shirdi. I just given suggestion to Chief Minister that you can make 50 airports in Mumbai, in Maharashtra. He said, where is the money? Well, I am telling you the small example. You can monetize Shirdi airport for 25 years. You will get 2,500 crore. And with 2,500 crore, you can make 50 airports in Maharashtra. And your return will be there. Capital cost will be no. No interest will be there. So you can make the airports, just like the road. We are monetizing the roads. And we are getting the money. So now this is the thing that you, some of the projects which are economically viable, there is a really... Uh, there is no economic viability there, then there is a problem. We are making a lot of tunnels, roads in northeast Kashmir. There is traffic density is less. So now I am giving you the example, I am making ring roads for big cities. The policy is 50% of the cost from the state government for land acquisition, that is the condition. So I, eight days before I was in Karnataka, I just give them, even in Kerala Chief Minister, I give solution to them that you give me the sand, the all type of aggregate, everything royalty free. Then the government land which you are using for the project, you give us, give us without cost. And for our logistic park also, you give me the land, commercially I can develop. And your GST share is 9%. You make the exemption of your GST for that particular project, this come to 35 to 40%. So that will be your contribution in the project, and project is economically viable, I can make it. So we are making hundreds of ring road now with this principle. Everywhere we need to find out some way out. I remember when I was water resources minister, we have prepared river, we have sanctioned the river connectivity project 48, that connecting to Ganga to Kaveh and all the projects for the out of which 19 DPR was prepared. And when the project cost was very high, I am giving the example of Pancheshwar in Nepal. The cost of the project is 60,000 crore. And because there is no Pancheshwar, that is the reason we are facing flood problem in UP and Bihar. So just uh, 20 days before the Nepal Deputy Prime Minister was with me, I suggested him that we don't invest anything. This project is going to create 6,000 megawatt hydropower. So we will give 2,000, 3,000 megawatt power. The total requirement in Nepal is 2,500 megawatt. So we will get 100% power from this project, free of charge. And we will invest in it. And that is going to resolve our problem in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. And also, we can use that water for irrigation. And we can stop the floods in Ganga and Brahmaputra also. Because this is very crucial. We can make waterways also. Already, I have completed waterways in uh, Ganga. And idea is to connect that waterways in Gandak, taking up to Nepal border. And going by road, the cost is 10 rupees. Going by railway is 6 rupees. Going by waterways is 1 rupees. So we need to make multimodal logistic plan. Somewhere we can use waterways. Somewhere we can use railways. Somewhere we can use roads. And by which we can, we have to reduce the logistic cost. And the problem is that when the projects which are not economically viable, there we need low cost interest capital. And that is exactly the problem is that when we want to take that investment, the dollar rupees fluctuation is a big problem. And that is one of the reasons that we are not succeeding it. And the other problem is to getting loan in dollars. To get a clearance from all the department is so, so complicated that I say we leave it. Don't go to that route because people are ready to invest. In Japan, their situation is that even on 0%, we will get the money. In Korea, also we will get But problem is that the dollar rupees fluctuation is a big problem. But now we need to find out some way out because a lot of people in the world, they want to invest in India. And India as a better destiny as compared with the other countries. So their interest is to invest in India. The automobile industry size is 7.5 lakh crores. Out of 50% is export. 
And now, as in my, I have a mission that to make this industry of 15 lakh crore that within five years. And this is the industry which is giving maximum employment potential and growth to the country. This is the industry which is giving maximum revenue to state and central government as a part of GST. And now we can make it 15 lakh crore. Really, presently it gives 4 crore jobs. It is going to create 8 crore jobs. So India, all reputed brands in the auto automobile industry, reputed brands are present in India. And uh, production cost is less. And we are now scrapping policy by which the copper, steel, rubber, aluminum, everything will be, we can make recycling of it and it is easily available. I will request you that regarding this uh, scrapping, we have, we can develop three units in one district. We need 2,000 units in the country, the fitness unit and scrapping units. And at the same time, our scrapping vehicle number is coming to 1 crore 2 lakhs vehicle because they need to take now fitness certificate test after 15 years. And so there's a huge potential which is going to improve the economy, Indian economy, because we are importing copper, we are importing aluminum, we are importing rubber, we are importing plastic. So here it can be a golden opportunity for that. So really I feel that in Indian infrastructure we are making lot of, we are making logistic parts. At least uh, we are planning already in the process of 2 lakh crore we are investing in logistic part. Then we have the proposals of rope, cable car, fanapular railway. How much proposal we have received? 250 proposals are 1,000 kilometers. 250 proposal is with me now. And now just 8 days before the Ladakh LG was with me. Because people in hill area they have to go by that road and diesel, all pollution is going on. So in Goa, one of the startups started that funicular rail. I just call in, make a one small proposal there as a pilot project. And if you succeed, 700 crore is pending with me as a CRF of Ladakh and Leh. I suggest LG that we will make all the funicular rail in Ladakh and Leh. Even we can make in Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Himachal, Arunachal, everywhere. And that can be a great thing. They can apple, take an apple from the higher area, taking to the down. And even for the public transport also, it can be useful. So the new technology are available. The last point is, we have to think about new materials. If the monopoly is there, people are taking disadvantage. They are making the cartel. And that is the one of the reasons that now we are allowing glass fiber steel. We need to find out some option for cement or something. Now I am giving you the example. We have just accepted the technology from Malaysia. That distance between the two pier in India is 30 meter maximum. But now we can go up to 120 meter. And already one of the factory in Pune has already started from Satyajit Nimbalkar doing his book for year. Even in railway ROB and ROB, we don't need any pier between the line. Because 120 meters, there is no problem. So the only the thing is that the casting of that pier, uh, the, the, bar, the after the pier we are taking that beam, that is a steel fiber. And that is the reason that we can reduce the cost. I am giving two examples. When we are making one uh, bridge in Majoli Island, constituency of Sonwal, I was there in election camp and he insisted me to declare the bridge. But that, that is, Brahmaputra is not a river, just like a sea. So I was bothering, but ultimately, he emotionally told me, you have to take a decision. So I declared. And when I come into Delhi, I understand the cost of the bridge is 6,000 crore. So I disturbed how now this problem is solved. So by using this technology, we go for the tender. And we receive the tender from UP Bridge Corporation for 680 crores. That's in the Jojila Tunnel, four times we have gone for the tender, the cost, estimated cost was 10,000 crore. And in Delhi, for a year, we have been making a lot of research, technology, consultant, all the people work on it. And now, the fourth time, fifth time, when it was tender, we received the cost, and we have a saving of 5,000 crore in the project. 5,000 crore. So my suggestion is, 
we need to reduce the cost of construction i we need to improve the quality of construction by using of different materials if you can reduce the cost that is very important for the country we are making bus port like airport we are making logistic parks we are making parking plazas even we are making highways tunnels bridges i feel that there is a huge potential for investment economic viability is there as far as my department is concerned even some of the department also there is economic viability i am making broad gauge metro in nagpur lastly i am giving that example to you the cost of the metro per kilometer is 350 crore and my metro cost is 2.5 crore per kilometer from nagpur to amravati nagpur to gondia nagpur to uh, chinwala nagpur to baitur nagpur to chandrapur nagpur to varsa the broad gauge is there the stations are there and now we are selecting the people from nagpur under msme and there will be a rolling stock of eight two are the for precula the vegetables and pharmaceutical for that purpose and six will be rolling stock for the one is uh, economic class five will be the economy class and one will be business class the cost is coming to 30 crore so we can purchase 50 trains without investment of our from the private people so nagpur metro is the agency and now we have finalized the agreement with, with the railway and it can be a great thing the speed of the railway is 140 km per hour so it is and it say have a special technology by which it increase the speed so my suggestion is by using different technology we can give relief to the people reduce the capital cost and having good returns so there is a huge potential in india because already the prime minister's plan is in gati shakti that we need lot of investment in infrastructure water power transport communication railway airports shipping everywhere there is a success story and india is a, is a successful example for the world we are the fastest growing economy and we are number 5 as far as the economy is concerned so i feel that here is a golden opportunity for investment the economic viability is good and 100% the people like you 100% they will give response for that once again thank you very much namaskar